Окей. Okay. Так. Okay, so I will switch to English now and I will present my master thesis about the magnetometry of big electric signals. Uh, so in this uh, talk, I will uh, follow the structure of the work I've prepared. Uh, firstly, I will start with the overview of the magnetometry of the techniques and the challenges. I will uh, present the analysis of the magnetic field sources. Those are the electric sources that generate magnetic fields. Uh, and I will focus on the biological sources. I will first do the macroscopic analysis and then I will um, uh, spend time on nanoscopic analysis that will explain in more details how those sources look like on the nanoscale. And lastly, I will uh, present the results of my theoretical work and experimental work in the if of Dresden, where I was uh, a part of a team that worked on the cantilever-based magnetometry. Uh, I would like to firstly uh, remind you about the motivation for my master thesis. It was the study of the uh, those uh, special active cells in neuron system that generate magnetic fields. And from there, I generalized to, uh, any, um, to any magnetic field source and but kept this idea in mind. So my idea was to uh, be able to measure magnetic fields from one cell and uh, image their activity. So I will go with the magnetometry overview. So magnetometry is the field that allow uh, the field and the method that allows to uh, image uh, various uh, distribution of currents and uh, directly measure magnetic fields. So places where it will be interesting is studying of the domain structures of paramagnets, like in the middle here, or uh, using speed to study superconductivity currents and uh, with vortices. It is also used in military applications to detect magnetic fields produced by submarines for detection. And uh, in particular, it is used in uh, medicine and biology to study the electric uh, sources in magnetic fields of the magnetic fields that uh, are present in brain and in cells. So the, the, uh, the uh, methods that are present or the, the, the we can use in magnetometry are various uh, magnetometers. Those, uh, there are a vast uh, number of different magnetometers which different sensitivity that allow to measure magnetic fields of different strengths. So the state of the art uh, magnetometers would be squids there are also miniature uh, optically pumped magnetometers that use the vapor of alkali metals to uh, read out the magnetic field measurements. There are also uh, uh, giant magnetic resistant based magnetometers that can be uh, printed on the flexible substrate. And there are also nitrogen vacancy diamonds uh, magnetometers that use the nitrogen vacancies defects in diamonds to uh, read out the magnetic field of those uh, where the diamond is present, where the defect is present. Uh, so uh, we would like to define what we need from those methods to uh, measure weak signals. So by weak signals, having this motivation in mind, I mean the signals produced by the neural tissues, those are the neurons here. Uh, they usually generate uh, on the distance of several millimeters, the uh, magnetic fields of 60 Peta Tesla, Pico Tesla, and they have the time scale of one millisecond, which uh, gives the kind of the sensitivity threshold of, for the signal to be weak of 10 Peta Tesla per square root of Gertz. Uh, to better understand what do we measure with magnetometry, I provide the uh, usually uh, what is present in literature. I provide the connection between the generators of the magnetic field, the currents, and the magnetic field itself. The usual starting point is the Maxwell equations uh, that uh, contain the usual four Maxwell equations. They are, uh, they are uh, add, we add the material constitutional equations, which define the properties of the matter. And uh, we also uh, separately write down the continuity equation. From this set of uh, equations one to seven, uh, we can arrive to the connection of the magnetic field with the uh, 
uh, currents as follows. So it is customary to separate the current, the generator of the magnetic field, into two components. One is the migrational term, which is proportional to the uh, gradient of the potential. And another term is everything else. Uh, in quasi-stationary approximation, where we can neglect the time derivatives of all the uh, components here, the magnetic field can be shown to uh, be presented with this integral, which gives the rotor of the, of the, the, um, the curl of the total current. By substituting the, uh, the, uh, this form 8 into this integral 10, we show that the magnetic field is presented as a sum of two integrals. One gives the curl of those primary currents generated by non-ohmic sources, and another term which follows from the uh, ohmic uh, nature of the uh, media. So we would like uh, so in so in order to uh, so, uh, find the magnetic field, we need to uh, uh, solve the boundary conditions. Uh, we need to solve this equation. Uh, knowing uh, the distribution of primary sources, so IP, with some boundary conditions. And from there, we need to find the uh, potential T. And finally, plug in this T, phi, and the primary currents into this integral form to obtain the magnetic field. And it is customary to be interested in the distribution of those primary sources. Uh, to identify what are the primary sources, we've, uh, we've uh, considered the non-equilibrium thermodynamic problem uh, where there are uh, electrolytes uh, and the uh, dissolved in a solution. Uh, uh, the derivation is quite cumbersome and complicated, but it allows to represent the currents as the clear sum of two terms. One follows from the diffusion of the components of the uh, carrier charges, and another follows from the uh, migration of the carrier charges in the presence of the electric field. Uh, here, this is the sum that is, uh, mathematically, it looks like the Ohm law for the total circuit with the sources. So if you see here is the um, electric field and here's the, uh, uh, electromotive force divide, uh, divided by the resistance or multiplied by the conductivity. Uh, this uh, transfer numbers, Tm, are the uh, characteristic of a system that, uh, of, the, of the carriers that give their, uh, uh, that show how much of the current they transfer by the diffusion process. So if you look at the biological tissues, those uh, differences in transfer numbers and the gradients of chemical potentials will be the sources of the uh, electric field and the sources of the current that generate the magnetic field. Uh, so to represent the activation of the biological tissue, we uh, hide the, all the complexity into the distribution of those transfer numbers and show that the propagation of the action potential, this is the activation of the membrane that generates the current, can be modeled as the traveling uh, change of those transfer numbers. However, we would like now to focus on one aspect of the, uh, this problem, that is the nanoscopic analysis. And to answer the question of if there are magnetic field, or if there is electric field or the gradient of phi, where are the charges that generate this electric field? This uh, this part is largely motivated by the question Andrew Kurduk from first of the, from first our seminars. So to, to answer this question, we've considered the uh, equilibrium uh, state where there is a membrane uh, that separates two solutions. The two solutions uh, are of a binary electrolyte that consists of the anion chloride minus and uh, sodium plus. And this membrane is special in the sense that it allows to pass only cation through it. Uh, so in this case, it's sodium. It has the defined thickness D and uh, it has the dielectric, con dielectric constant epsilon I. And on the sides of this membrane, there are two solutions. Uh, infinitely far from this membrane, the concentrations of the electrolyte is CH on the left on this image and CL on the right on this image. 
uh, this CH and C uh, will coincide as will represent the uh, concentration of both anion and cation if there is no electric field. So infinitely far from the uh, membrane where there is electron neutrality. So to uh, find the uh, so to find the distribution, so the idea is to find the uh, electric potential and from the electric potential to find the distribution of the charges that uh, are just, uh, that uh, um, somehow positioned in the system due to the presence of these electromotive forces in the membrane. So to do so, we consider the Poisson-Boltzmann equation, which give the, um, which has the form of the Poisson equation which gives the connection between the Laplace of the gradient with the uh, charge density. In this case, the charge density follows the Boltzmann distribution. So, and that's why the equations are called Poisson-Boltzmann. So in order to find the phi, we need to solve this system equation, which is given as a piecewise function for separately left region, inside compartment of the membrane and the right region. Uh, we need to use the fact that the chemical potential of the permissible ion inside the membrane is continuous. We also use the condition and the, uh, one of the assumptions is that there is no surface charges on the membrane boundary and there is no dipole charges on the membrane boundary, which allows us to use the uh, property of the continuity of the electrical potential and the continuity of the electric displacement factor. So we were able to solve this system. And first we've uh, discovered that in this system, even without solving it, there are several obvious, um, several clear um, conclusions that we can make. So first of all, the difference of the potential across the membrane infinitely far on the left and on the right uh, depends only on the ratio of the concentrations of the electrolytes. Secondly, we see that the solutions outside of the membrane would follow so-called Goethe-Chapman equation, and they will have the characteristic decay length which is given by the by length uh, here, defined as follows. And uh, we see that there are two possible uh, behavior inside the membrane. One is that when there is the uh, monotonously decaying uh, uh, dependency of the potential from the coordinate. And the second is where we observe the maximum of the potential inside the membrane. Mathematically, it will represent different systems of equations that we need to solve. And surprisingly, it was difficult to uh, have those different cases combined in you know, one uh, numerical solution. However, we were able to identify three parameters which uh, specify the solution or which specify the case which we will need to consider. Those parameters are the ratio of the Debye length inside the membrane to the thickness of the membrane D, the uh, parameter that is a combination of the dielectric constants and the uh, parameter gamma. And also um, it reminded me that I didn't explain what gamma is. And so allow me to return to the previous slide. The gamma gives the, um, is the parameter that gives the ratio of the concentrations immediately outside of the membrane to the concentration in the, immediately inside the membrane. So the membrane absorbs only gamma portion of ions immediately outside of it from both sides. Thermodynamically, it will be a coefficient proportional to the uh, jump of the uh, electrochemical potential of the ion inside the, of the Born energy inside the, um, inside the membrane to the outside of the membrane. So in order to get inside the membrane, this uh, permissible cation will need to uh, uh, surpass this energy uh, barrier. I would say that your time is uh, already uh, uh, used all the time already. Yeah, five more minutes, please. I was considering, I was planning to have it 15 minutes. So we were able to uh, just, have the... Just, uh, just wanted to say that it's it's too detailed. It's uh, okay. anyway, anyway, it's difficult to understand, understand in such a way. Therefore, it's a, you, you, you try to do just like a talk for one hour or something like this. And... Yeah, it seems like it. Okay, I will just skim through the results. So we were able to identify this uh, diagram where each region gives the different behavior of the potential inside the membrane. We were able to build the uh, dependency of the potential inside the membrane and outside of the membrane, dependent on the uh, influential parameters for different combinations of parameters and predefined uh, ratio of the concentrations. And um, uh, so, and we completed, um, yeah, this part of the problem. 
Uh, also, as a final note, I would like to give uh, an overview of what I was doing in FFV Dresden, where uh, we studied the cantilevers and the applicability to measure magnetic fields. So the cantilever is this uh, object in the background where it's a small uh, plate with an attached object to the end. In this case of the magnetometry, the attached object is the uh, some kind of magnetic moment. This uh, cantilever is oscillated by the piezoactivated base, so the attachment point here, and it is uh, being oscillated with the driven frequency omega d. By measuring the frequency of oscillations of the end of the cantilever, you can actually uh, detect the deviation from the um, uh, frequency or the eigenfrequency due to the presence of the magnetic field, because the uh, frequency of the oscillations will be given by this um, uh, elastic coefficient of this cantilever system, plus the term that depends on the uh, force derivative. And the force derivatives can be shown to uh, be consist consisted of two terms. One is the second derivative of the magnetic field with respect to the vertical coordinate. And another one is uh, directly magnetic field. So it, as a last conclusion of our work, it was hypothesized that by studying this system, and measuring its oscillation, it was possible to infer the magnetic field, thus possibly provide another way to measure uh, small magnetic fields uh, near some objects. So as a conclusion, I would like to summarize that we have considered the forward problem of magnetometry by specifying what are the sources of the magnetic fields and separating the magnetic fields into two components, which are given, which are given by the sources and the uh, properties of the um, uh, media. We were able to identify the primary sources in biological uh, tissues by um, uh, studying the no non-equilibrium thermodynamical problem. We solved the problem of charge distribution near uh, the membrane, which is, which is uh, the source of electric field in biological tissues. And we uh, studied the problem of cantilever magnetometry and identified the way to uh, measure magnetic field by uh, by checking their oscillations. So that will be the end of the presentation. Thank you. Dziękujemy. Czy jest zapytanie? Tak. Nie, nie, nie. A co? A bude? A okay. A uh, just uh, just a question and and, and impression. Uh, no, my impression that it's uh, too long and uh, actually. Uh, you show you have shown uh, three pieces of this uh, of, of of the work and uh, uh, say nothing about connections. So, so you have introduction. You have this piece of uh, your uh, work with membrane currents and this uh, stuff, and, and now with uh, this cantilever. Could you say something about connections? Uh, yes, I can say connection about the nanoscopic and macroscopic analysis and i can also say about the magnetometry so uh three first three parts out of four parts are connected what is not connected is the fourth part this is true but this refers more to this uh, ways of magnetometry i mean so it, the connection it, it, it is nice that is that you can say about connection i i just want to say that you should yeah. stress this connection Yes, well, this is right. In your talk, it, it is more important to stress the connection between these parts than to go into details, because in this 10 minutes uh, or 15 minutes, how, how long it will be uh, your presentation uh, on diploma, uh, you just do not have time to explain everything. And you, say, you, you, you should say just uh, by such a big blocks that uh, this was done, uh, it, 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 so the pieces which, which were done and uh, just uh, just to mark them and uh, just to say connections between them and you may choose one or two to go into detail just to show that it is not just a form that you you know something inside that you that, that you do this stuff uh, you don't need to go into detail uh, yes uh... Just, uh, just I wanted to ask one uh, one question. Uh, so, uh, could you explain uh, this about sensitivity of the sensors? So, why in the units uh, is this frequency goes as a square root of? Uh, this is the power uh, spectrum density of the signal that we measure, and that's why it is given the square root of power. Power. Yeah. But, but but power it should be it should be it should be proportional to time. 
why why square root uh, appears? Uh, because the um, well, if you take the because if you look at the Fourier transform, this will be in the units one over second, and the power in the in, inside the Fourier transform in the band. Um, so the, I I cannot completely answer this question. I, my understanding is that this follows from the Fourier transform and the quantities provided there, and the explanation follows the literature that no. gives this in this okay, unit. Okay. This is something which is trivial, and and I should know it, but uh, I realize that I uh, I uh, don't know now, and I I, I just wanted maybe you clarify. <sighs> Okay. Unfortunately, I, I also feel like it's trivial, and but maybe not so. Uh, maybe somebody from the audience knows. This is a question of a general listener. Please, slide number seven. Mm -hmm. You have shown. Uh, Two lines, the dotted line, low dot curve and solid curve. What, what does it mean? What the difference? Uh, this is a good question, and uh, honestly, I don't remember now. I think the difference. Uh, I, I, I took a screenshot so that the complete image is seen. Uh, it is the uh, biomagnetism problem where they studied the physiological system, and if I recall correctly, the difference would be into the uh, way they activate this. Uh, signal. So in the first case, they give the um, they depolarize the membrane in one way by giving this spike way down, and in another way, it's spike way up. Okay. So this is purely uh, different. experimental difference. Yes. The question was about difference between solid line and dot dotted line. Ah, uh, yeah. So one gives the magnetic field, and one gives the potential. If uh, yeah, it should be noted in the. Um, I, it is true that it should be noted in the description, but I recall from the paper that one is the magnetic field and another gives the shape of the uh, potential measured of the membrane. Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. Прежде всего я хочу сказать, что очень интересный доклад, вот, но у меня такое как бы Вопрос или пожелание методическое. Вот десятый слайд, если можно, покажите. Кажется, десятый. Да. Вот смотрите, при анализе значит, электрохимических движущих сил вы mm -hmm. пользуетесь неравновесной термодинамикой. Mm -hmm. ну, пусть вблизи равновесия, но все-таки неравновесный. Вот. Mm -hmm. А с другой стороны, вроде бы на пятнадцатом, ну, например, на пятнадцатом слайде, если можно показать. Mm -hmm. Можно его показать? Да, Это... да, да. Или предыдущее. Выражение, которое, в общем-то, относится к, ну, строго к равновесию. Ну, например, значит, вот слева вверху. Mm -hmm. Мне кажется, что было бы, ну, как бы уместно поместить какой-то еще один разъясняющий слайд. Mm -hmm. вот, ну, вот, можно было бы, из которого можно было бы понять, почему и, и те, и другие соотношения могут быть объединены вот в рамках вашего подхода. Да, да, надо будет уточнить это. Спасибо. Еще вопросы? Ну, если можно, у меня вопрос. Mm -hmm. Когда вы рассматриваете движение кантилевера и mm -hmm. о том, что вы можете измерять с его помощью магнитные поля, mm -hmm. Что, собственно, нового вы при этом? Ну, магнитная силовая микроскопия известна. Что нового? Насколько мне известно, кантилевры обычно не меряют сами по себе магнитное поле, а меряют источники магнитного поля, вблизи, которые находятся в образце, вдоль которого происходит сканирование кантилевра. То есть э, обычно кантилевры не висят в воздухе, где какое-то магнитное поле порождается источниками далекими от кантилевра. И в, в проблемах э, с MFM, магнитной пользой микроскопии, доминирующим членом будет как раз -таки вторая производная э, по координате, из которой следуют выводы о распределении источников вблизи кантилевра. 
Вот новое это как раз фокус на вот этом втором члене, который пропорционален в компоненте магнитного поля. Я не знаю, как Евгений, но я не понял ответа на твой на, на, на вопрос, в смысле, что ты этим хотел сказать. То есть, по-моему, по ответ на вопрос это чувствительность. Значит, что вопрос, вопрос, что нового, да, что нового в данном случае вот в, твоей, в твоей работе есть по сравнению с тем, как меряются магнитные поля значит, и, и другими. То есть кантиливер это же не они придумали мерять магнитное поле, да, и, ну, не ты, и не. не и не группа это, то есть, а насколько я понимаю, они увеличивают чувствительность именно используя вот такой вот второй кантиливер, да? Ну, это на самом деле я не упоминал об этом в этой презентации. Я думаю, я думаю, Владимир Леонидович Карбовский, если он присутствует, может как бы, дать свое экспертное мнение по этому поводу. Но, насколько я понимаю, работу вообще магнитометрии с кантиливерами как раз меряет, как раз судится о природе источников магнитного поля по вот этому первому члену, который пропорционален второй производной от координат. В литературе по магнитометрии вот этот вот член пропорционален магнитному полю, им пренебрегают в силу, в силу того, что рассматриваются неоднородные поля или неоднородные на этих масштабах поля. Так, а у вас? У вас же тоже неоднородные поля? Это хороший вопрос, какое у нас поле. Это, конечно, будет зависеть от того, на каком расстоянии от источников, но это, эта часть не посвящена тому, чтобы анализировать э, исто... поле, которое мы будем мерить. Мы просто показываем, что э, с помощью такого метода можно мерить и поле, если э, градиент или если поле мало меняется на характеристических масштабах осцилляции кантиливера. Нет, все-таки не, не понял по сути, но формально, формально значит, вот, вот, вот ты рассказываешь, хотелось бы, если можешь, конечно, да, то есть, в общем, показать именно преимущество, сказать, что вот преимущество вот того, что мы делаем, вот состоит в том-то, да, то есть. Mm -hmm. И, то есть, это нельзя сформулировать, что использование, ну, сейчас, сейчас это у тебя уравнение, это просто для кантиливера, да, это, это, да. это угу. то, что второй кантиливер, это не об этом. Угу. Да? То есть, ты, ты просто рассматриваешь, как, в общем-то, кантиливер чувствует магнитное поле и изменение магнитного поля, да? Угу. Да, и на самом-то деле, я даже сейчас, разобравшись с теми, затрудняюсь ответить про преимущество этого, то есть, это просто такое вот рассмотрение возможностей. Думаю, про будущее этого метода, я не думаю, что это будет более чувствительно, чем существующие методы измерения магнитного поля. Но как и один из аспектов магнитной силовой микроскопии с помощью кантилевера, это может рассматриваться отдельно. Ну, как я понимаю, вы не показали, что у вас второе слагаемое, которое вы оставили, а другие им пренебрегают, что оно достаточно велико, чтобы его учитывать. И даже если у вас велико, то вы усложнили форму уравнения, ну, фактически вернувшись к изначальной форме. То есть это а... истоком, а не вполне новый результат. Ну, я согласен, что тут новизны не так много, как в предыдущих часах. И действительно, это просто акцент на том, что обычно выкидывают. Конечно, чтобы понять, выкинуть этот член или нет, нужно понимать источники магнитного поля, понимать, что мы будем ожидать от а, магнитного повтори, поля. Повтори, я, наверное, прослушал. Какой член обычно выкидывают и какой у тебя ты оставил? Первый член обычно выкидывают, точнее, выкидывают обычно второй член, потому что считается, второй, что... Второй поле, поле пропадает. Да. И считается, что второе производное поле доминирует над... Это правда, если мы находимся вблизи источников. А, То есть, если а, мы... Хорошо, я понял. А тебе не, не интересно вот по, по, посмотреть? Вот в данном случае это, ж, это, это для ориентации а, вертикального момента магнитного. Да? Но, да. Но можно что, еще, еще разные ориентации выбирать, смотреть. В общем-то, возможно, они дают какую-то эту. И, и это первое. И второе... ДБ по ДЗ, а ДБ по Д в плоскости там по ДХ там неинтересно, не нет? Я смотрел по этому поводу. У меня есть выражение, которое дает вот производную силы как скалярное произведение магнитного поля и момента магнитного. 
Но вот этот член, он как раз единственный, который пропорционален полю. Точнее, как? Вот этот вот член, он будет всегда пропорционален проекции магнитного поля на направление магнитного момента в начального. То есть если магнитный момент ориентирован по оси Z в положении равновесия, то мы будем мерять магнитное поле Z компонент магнитного поля. Если переориентировать его в другом направлении, то все компоненты поменяются на, соответственно, другую компоненту магнитного поля. Хорошо. Ну и на что вы нацелены? На изменение, на померить изменение резонансной частоты, да? Или... Да. Да. То есть фаза тоже чувствительная, знаешь, и чуть-чуть к другому. Ну ладно. Ну вот, я записал, да, изменение фазы. Хорошо. В общем, да. Давай, это, это так. Да. На, на вопрос на будущее, вот сделаешь такой научный доклад, тогда более, mm -hmm. более детально можно будет. Mm -hmm. Спасибо. Mm -hmm. Спасибо. Вопросов вроде больше нет. Следующий у нас докладывает Иван Горбачев.